This is Philemon. Book of Philemon. It's quite an interesting little book. If you read it a few times, uh, you get the pattern of it. And really, it's about reconciliation. Master and his, his servant. Let's read verses 1 through 3 to start. That's the, the introduction. Philemon. Only one chapter, so you, you always feel like saying chapter 1. But uh, Verses 1 through 3. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the introduction, pretty uh, typical of a, of a letter as they would write at that time. He actually uses both the, the Greek and the Hebrew greeting. Uh, grace is the, is the Greek greeting. Uh, peace is the Hebrew greeting. You, you, can, you can think, of, you know, when you meet someone Jewish, shalom, you know, they, they would greet you. Uh, Philemon was a Christian gentleman who lived in Colossae. Uh, you know, you're familiar with the book of Colossians. And um, the, uh, one of the men there, Archippus, is mentioned at the end of Colossians. Say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord that thou fulfill it. Uh, some people think he might have been one of the pastors of the church or might have just had a, a ministry in the church. But anyway, uh, that was another one of the men in the church there at, uh, at uh, Colossae. Paul was writing this from prison. You might have noticed the first sentence, he says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. So he doesn't attribute it to Rome. He doesn't say a prisoner of Rome, prisoner of those people that turned me in or, you know, whatever. Uh, he says a prisoner of Jesus Christ because he knew that God was in it. God was doing something. And you'll see as we go through this chapter that um, the, the reason this, the fellow gets saved is because Paul's in prison. That's when it, where and when he meets Paul. You know, God uses all kinds of situations for good. And if we'll look for that, uh, you know, it can be a blessing. Well, one of the first things he does in, in relation to Philemon is he praises him. Let's read verses 4 through 7. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Those are nice words, aren't they? And he's just saying, you know, God bless you, uh, Philemon. You're, you're, a, you're a Christian gentleman. And in, in verse 4, he says he, he's thankful for him. And he prays for him. Isn't it nice when somebody says, I've been praying for you? you know? And that's, that's what Paul is, is saying there to, to Philemon. And he... I don't know what you, word to use here. He um, um, not recommends. He, anyway, he compliments him. That's the word I'm looking for. He compliments him on his uh, reputation. Uh, Philemon has a good reputation there in, in uh, verse 5. Hearing of thy love, hearing of thy faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. And he's known as a person who loves the Lord and who loves Christians. Uh, love and faith. And then in verse 6, th that word communication, you may have heard the Greek word koinonia. It has to do with fellowship, you know, the relationship of believers. And uh, he also has a good reputation as being a part of Christian fellowship, koinonia, uh, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual. Uh, you know, even though Philemon was a godly man, Paul knew that he could continue to grow. That same is true for all of us. You never, I've got some trees in my backyard. I guess, I think they decided they'd grown enough and they died. <laughs> you know, uh, some things have a, a maximum. But as Christians, we're never going to be exactly like Jesus. So we can keep growing. And that's what, he, I, what he's saying there in verse 6, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. You know, the more you know the Lord, the more you're going to see, oh, the Lord's doing that for me. Well, the Lord's done that for me. <laughs> Sometimes you'll even pray for something you already have, you know. And as you get, get along in your Christian life, say, oh, already got that. <laughs> Just haven't been using it. Uh, there's great potential. We can and, and always should grow. And one of the keys he gives there is that we need to acknowledge every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. 
You know, you can be really negative about life if, if you want to, uh, but the Christian life is positive. In fact, there's a verse in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 20. This is a good verse. This would be a good, uh, good verse to memorize. You can make this your life verse. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a, a great God. He's done wonderful things for us. He continues to work with us. Uh, we have great potential in the Lord. And he's just encouraging Philemon, keep growing in the Lord. And he talks about uh, the blessing that he's been in verse 7. We have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. You know, Paul would have come in contact with people who'd been blessed through their contact with Philemon. And in conversation, they say, oh, yeah, he helped us out, or he, he said this, or he did this. And, uh, you know, what a blessing it was. And it's interesting there, he, uh, he calls him brother at the end of verse 7. Later on, at the end, in verse 16, I think it is, um, yeah, I think it's verse, yeah. He calls Philemon's servant a brother. Yeah, it wasn't their position in life, it was their position in, in Christ that, that makes the difference. And that's, that's still true today. Um, both master and slave are called brother. That, that brings us to the situation that's here. Philemon is a, probably a well-to-do man. He's a Christian. And uh, Paul has come in contact with Onesimus. Onesimus had been Philemon's, and I'll just use the word slave, servant, slave. And he had probably done wrong and then run away. And he'd come in contact with Paul and gotten saved. And as often happened, he got, you know, his life was, was changed because he got saved and they got to talking. Um, Paul, you know, I'm feeling bad because I'm a runaway slave. I ran away from Philemon. Philemon? Does, you mean the Philemon lives on North Street? Yeah, yeah. I know him. <laughs> and they found that they knew. They both knew Philemon. You know, they, they both had a relationship with him. Um, and so they, he encouraged him to, to do what was right and to, to, to resolve the situation, to make reconciliation uh, with his master. And uh, so then Paul, in verses 8 through 16, has a plea. You know, we've seen his praise. Now we see his plea to Philemon because uh, he's sending, I'll probably get these names wrong at some time, but Onesimus back. And uh, the more I read this today, I thought, man, Paul really lays this on thick. <laughs> you know, he could have just said one or two things. He says about 10 things. You know, you need to receive Onesimus. And you know, he gives all these different reasons. Let, let's look at them. Uh, we'll just read look at it a, a verse at a time, but the basic is in verse 17. Uh, if you count me there for a partner, receive him as myself. He, he's telling Philemon, you need to receive Onesimus. But in, in verse um, 8, he says, Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such an one as Paul the aged and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Now, what he's saying there is, I could command you. That word enjoin, if you look that up, it means com basically command. I could command you, and uh, the word convenient means fitting. Uh, enjoin thee to that which is convenient. I could command you to do what's right. Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee. So I'm just going to ask you. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to command, I'm just going to ask. And then he begins, saying, here's, here's why you should, you should receive him receive him. Number one, for love's sake. And then he just throws in, and I'm old, and I'm in prison. <laughs> I've never really noticed that before. You know? just, he just keeps popping him with, you know, with things. And, uh, but the number one is, for love's sake, I beseech thee. Then, verse 10, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Because he's, this is a saved person. This is your brother in Christ. Uh, verse 11, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. Now, the interesting thing about that is Onesimus' name means profitable. So what he's saying there is profitable was unprofitable, but now profitable is profitable. <laughs> so he's saying this, he's profitable. 
and you know, really, we need to learn the value of a person. If God, if we can get God to get a hold of a life, they'll be profitable. You know, Paul was, was not profitable before the Lord got a hold of him. Then verse 12, whom I've sent again, thou therefore receive him that is mine own bowels. And we don't use that expression anymore, but he's just saying he's my very heart. Uh, I, I love this guy, he's saying. Uh, you need to receive him for love's sake. He's saved. He's profitable. Uh, I love him. Uh, verse 13, whom I would have retained with me that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. He's helping me. This guy's been a big help to me. But then verses 14 and 15 says, your choice. But without thy mind would I do nothing that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. You know, he said, I'm not going to command you. I'm just asking you. The choice is yours. Verse 15, for per perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldst receive him forever. <laughs> he's coming back. He, he left a slave. He's coming back a brother. You're going to spend, you're going to spend eternity in heaven with him. And that's what he says in verse 16. Now, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother, beloved, especially to me. But how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. What a blessing to see a life changed. Runaway slave. Boy, he, he didn't know what he was getting into, did he? He ran away and he, got, he met Paul. And, uh, you know, he could see Paul was a prisoner, but he could see even though he'd run away, he was still a prisoner to sin. And God set him free. And now he's able to, to go back and, and be what had been his master, uh, be his, his brother. In verse 17, this is a really interesting statement. He says, if thou count me there for a partner, receive him as myself. Receive him as me. Just like you were receiving me. And then he, he comes to his pledge in, in verses 18 to 21. If he hath wronged thee or oweth thee aught, Put that on mine account. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it. Albeit, I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self beside. Again, he just he pops something in there. <laughs> I'll pay it. Um, I, I'm good for it. I won't mention how much you owe me. <laughs> Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. So here's, here's Paul's pledge uh, to Philemon regarding Onesimus. And really, this is such a picture of reconciliation to God th through Christ. Y yeah, Christ is the one who says, you put it, put it to my account. I'll pay. What a blessing to know. The, the word that we use to describe that is imputed. <coughs> imputed. Uh, we're we're going to look at some verses in Romans in just a minute. But you know, uh, uh, Paul took on his, his debt. He said, you, you just put it to my account. Verse 17, if thou count me there for a partner, receive him as, as myself. If he hath wronged thee or oweth thee ought, put that on, on mine account. You know what a blessing it is to think that, that the Lord has done that for us. T take a look briefly this evening in Romans chapter 4. This idea of of imputed righteousness being imputed. Uh, it's a concept you need to understand, and Romans 4 deals with it very thoroughly. I'm not going to make a lot of comments, but I, do, I wanted to read quite a few of the verses here. Romans chapter 4, starting in verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So you see that, that concept there, like what we've talking about in Philemon. Uh, he, he relates it to Abraham, he relates it to David, and he talks about who God imputes righteousness without works, but also who, who the Lord will not impute sin. 
You know, both sides are true, and they come from the Lord. Forgiveness and righteousness uh, comes, comes from God. Look at verse 20. We'll just kind of finish it off with the last part of the chapter. Romans 4.20. This is Abraham. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone, that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. He says that that illustration wasn't just for them, it's for us. And look at the next verse. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, what a blessing that uh, Jesus paid the price he was willing to, to say, you, you just put that to my account. Uh, they, are, uh, they are of my heart. The expression, um, mine own bowel, my, they're my very heart. I love them. So the Bible says that um, our lives are acceptable to God, not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but by Christ's righteousness. He, he not only took our sins, but he gave us his righteousness. Well, in the physical situation here, you know, Paul was saying of Onesimus, I will repay in, in verse 19. I've written it with my own hand. I will repay it. Evidently, he wrote out this letter himself. He didn't always do that. But look at verse 20. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Now, I think he's saying there, go for joy. <laughs> you know, don't, don't look for the negative. Don't look for the, the bad stuff. He said, just Go for joy. And then verse 21, having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. Go the extra mile. You know, don't just do the least. Uh, do more. And he, he was saying, I, I, I believe that's what you'll do. Uh, you're, uh, you're a godly man, and uh, I believe that you'll, you'll do more than what I would even ask. Well, his prospect then in verse 22 he says, with all prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. He was hoping to be set free. He was hoping to come visit him. Get a room ready. I hope to come. And then he ends uh, the, the letter, verse 23. Uh, there salute thee, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. You know, what a blessing uh, to see that, just that little letter. But what a situation. Reconciliation to God and to each other. You know, Galatians 6, he says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You know, we love it when people show grace to us and mercy, and it, we're going to need it. <laughs> no, we need to, to offer it to others. The purpose of Philemon, I believe, is to show Christ's love for us and uh, to teach brotherly love. Uh, love, forgiveness, and fellowship. Just a little book, uh, but a real, real gem. Any comments or questions before we take some prayer requests tonight? I had the opportunity.